We are now recording. Again, welcome everyone to the neighborhood traffic calming meeting for Southwest Barlow Road between Southwest Murray Boulevard and Southwest Wilson Avenue. Tony Chow is our transportation project manager and he'll be giving the presentation this evening. Tony. All right, so this is a third of a series of neighborhood traffic calming meeting. During this meeting, we'll finalize between two options for traffic calming, your speed display sign and speed cushions. So we'll go through the PowerPoint and see where the stuff will be placed. And then after each, each after we present each of the options, then we'll go for polling and also questioning to see how you guys feel about it. So next slide, please. So as you can see, this is the project area map that will be voting in the in the uh, for the Baller Road uh, traffic coming project. They also be de deciding between the two options tonight, and then hopefully, like at the virtual open house, which will take place in a few weeks, then we'll present to you our final plan. Then it will go to uh, petition survey. And at the end of the meeting, we'll talk about those petition survey in virtual open house at the end of the meeting. So next slide. So as you can see, this is the first two options, speed cushions. So if you go through the map slowly, you'll see that at the bottom, you'll be, you see the speed hump sign and also the speed cushion. And that's what it will look like in real life. And then as you can see on, the, on Barlow Road, there'll be three set of speed cushions and it will go for each location in detail. Our next slide. So the first sign you see coming from Murray Boulevard, you'll be right before you get to Barlow Court uh, West, heading east. So about 200 feet away from that, you'll see the first set of speed cushion right before you get to 142nd place, and you'll be right at 14350 Southwest Barlow Road. So for both direct, it'll be for both directions. So it'll be a full set of speed cushion that will stretch across the whole road, roadway. Our next slide. So about 400 feet away, once you pass 142nd Avenue, there'll be your second set of speed cushion. And that'll be roughly at 14180 Southwest Ballo Road. And then you'll be, once again, you'll stretch across the whole roadway. So both sides will see it. Uh, next slide. And then approximately other 400 feet away, between 141st place and 140th place, you see your third speed cushion, and once again, it'll stretch, stretch across the whole road, and it'll be at 7105 Southwest 140th place, right near 14075 on Baller Road. And then, as you can see, if you head further east, there'll be a speed hump sign facing westbound traffic at 14020 Southwest Baller Road, and that will get you to Wilson Avenue. Uh, next slide. So this is what a speed cushion looks like in real life. As you can see, it's not your traditional speed hump. It has gap in the middle for emergency vehicle to pass through. And it's really good for drainage. And it's also really effective for slowing down traffic. So, and then you, you can also see that you have this, the relevant pavement marking. So it'd be really visible at night and people should be able to see it from both sides and they should be, they will be aware that there's a speed cushion ahead. And it's really effective measure to, to slow down traffic in general. And then this, this will bring us to the first polling question. Stacy, you're muted. Thank you. Sorry about that. I yeah. will put the first polling question up now and so participants can vote. You'll have 30 seconds or so, and here you go. So this polling question will be about where do you, how you feel about the speed cushion at this, mo at this moment. Do you support it? Do you uh, uh, personally against it? Or you feel like you have some personal concerns? So please choose one of the three options at this time. Okay, we still have a few more seconds here. Uh, 
Okay, and we're going to end the polling now. So now let's see how the numbers look in terms of support and against. So we have five people in support and with one against, and then we have two people with, uh, have some concerns or they're not sure at this moment, which is, which shows that the people are, are now okay with speed cushion for now, but then we also show you the, your speed display sign at this moment. So we can go ahead and proceed in the PowerPoint. Just one second here. And then once again, if you just have concerns about the speed cushions or about where they're placed or where they, be, they're, they're, where they are located, please tell us at the, either the Q&A at the end of the, before, before the end of the meeting or provide us feedback and we'll have information for you at the end of the PowerPoint for you to send us feedback if you do not want to share it during the meeting. So this is our second option, your speed display sign. And as you can see at the bottom, you see a solar power sign and you, there'll be a speed limit sign that will show you the speed limit of the roadway as long as, as, long, with, as long, no, along with a flashing sign that will tell you your speed limit you're traveling at that moment. So if you see the speed, speed limit, the sign will flash. If you're below the speed limit, at, at, which is 25 at this moment, then you will not flash. Uh, next slide. So as you're heading eastbound from Barlow Road, after you come from Murray Boulevard, you see your first set of your speed display sign at 14270 Southwest Barlow Road after you pass 142nd place. And this is only for eastbound traffic. Only people from coming eastbound from Murray will see it. So then, uh, then you can go next slide, please. So for westbound traffic coming up the hill from Wilson Avenue, you see one right after you pass 142nd, 141st place as you come up the hill, and you'll be roughly in front of 7095 Southwest Barlow Road. So then next slide, please. So there'll be one set of USB display sign for each, each uh, direction. And that's what it looks like in real life. This is on Hart Road near Bainey. And as you can see, there's a, so, like, like I mentioned, a solar panel sign on top, as long as the speed limit on the roadway, and then the speed that you'll be traveling as you pass by on the roadway. Uh, next, and then we'll, pull, we'll have a polling question at this moment, how you feel about this option. Okay. I will now give the second polling question. So once again, please provide your input at this moment, how you feel about the USB display sign. Do you support it? Do you, are you against it? Or you have some concerns or you're not sure at this time? Okay, the polling will close in just a few more seconds. Make sure we got everybody here. You're all doing a very good job, by the way, so thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna end the polling now and I'll be sharing the results. So it looks like there's some concerns about the USB display sign and there's, there's, there's not as, as much evidence support for it compared to speed, uh, speed cushions. So then we'll go ahead and move on in PowerPoint and then go through a few more things before we have, we'll, before we go have a conclusion and also questions. Okay, I'll stop sharing the results now. So, so we can go ahead and go to the next slide, please. So now at this moment, since we already did two polling question, now we open up to the residents. Do you guys have any questions or any input? And then once again, if you're not comfortable sharing with your input or question at this time, you can also contact us to, by email or phone if you provide, wish to provide input personally. But this time you can ask any question you like as, as well as provide any input you like. Okay, so what we'll do now is I've got a few questions that are in the queue. And so I will go ahead and read the question 
and then Tony will answer the question and or Tony, if you're not sure, you can always, um, Jabra could possibly answer the question. Um, okay, so the first question comes from Kate. Tony, could you mention that there won't be a yellow line painted on the road for participants when doing the speed humps? Thank so you. We, okay, sorry. So when doing the speed cushions, we typically don't put the center line. We just put the, the speed cushion across the roadway. It, and then, but then we also, it's, center line is something that we could put, but in general, like it's something that you will see a speed cushion without the center line. And then Jabba, do you have anything to add about the center line? Mm. Yes, T typically we don't mark a center line on roadways un unless, you know, the street carries approximately 6,000 vehicles per day. Uh, there is two thoughts about the center line. Sometimes people, they think when you add the center line, it makes it look like a highway and people will drive faster. There is also another thought that when you mark the center line, it will define your lane and it will make the traveled way kind of narrower so people tend, tend to slow. Uh, for Barlow Road, I, I, my opinion on it, I don't recommend having a center line. Speed cushions with, speed mar with markings on it probably is the best solution for, for, for this roadway at this time. Okay, the next question is, are the speed signs as effective as the speed cushions? Speed cushions are definitely more effective because they're physical measures, something that everybody feels going across the roadway. Whereas your speed display sign, someone could choose to ignore the sign or they choose to go fast to see how fast the sign could flash. So, you know, in, in, in general situation, speed cushions are more effective overall. Thank mm -hmm. you. Okay, and the next kind of question, it's more or less, I guess, a, a statement is, um, number one, it was determined that the traffic was due to school. Since schools are closed from COVID, why are we considering this an issue? It is anticipated that school enrollment will decrease after COVID, as many parents will not want their parents to go to school with the many, Many parents will not want their children, I think, um, is what the, yeah, want their children to go to school with a mask. So what happened to doing the study, like about a year, year and a half ago, we received a request from the residents to study this roadway for traffic calming. And during this time, we, we look at the accident, we look at the safety record, we look at speed data, and then we look at vehicle data during this typical school week before COVID. And it showed that there was a need for traffic calming because it's, it was pretty high on the project ranking list. So after Traffic Commission approved the project to move forward on the ranking list, then we went through a series of project design meetings, and this is our third meeting. So as far as, as, far as about concerns about COVID and schools not being in session, the study was before COVID, and it shows there was a need for traffic calming. And, but then residents will have, a, at a later point, they'll have time and place for us to provide your input, whether you support the project to move forward for, for funding. And then Jabra, do you have anything add, to add? Yeah, yeah the, the, the project is intended for the long run too. I mean, after we passed this pandemic, you know, traffic already on some streets, it went, is going back to normal. So we anticipate, you know, who knows what will happen next year. Uh, school could open again and everything could go back to normal. Uh, so then you will need these devices, you know, to slow down traffic. Most of the time with speeds, if the amount of traffic decreases on the street, doesn't mean the speeds decrease too. So probably the speeds are still at the same level they are when b before COVID. So it's a long-term solution and I think it will enhance the safety of the residents who live on the street. Okay, um, next question is, why are we spending $50,000 on speed cushions when we could put a stop sign at 142nd? I have been repeatedly, I have been repeatedly told by Tony that it is not his department, so whose department is it? 
So it is in a department that do consider speed, stop signs, but stop sign is not considered for traffic calming or not intended to slow down traffic. Stop signs only for when, when, they stop, when an intersection warrants stop sign for either volume, safety, or for, uh, for uh, visual hazards. And then so it's not something that we typically use for traffic calming unless the, 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 unless it's one of those three reasons like I mentioned before, safety, visibility, or traffic volumes. So that it's not something for traffic calming. And then we also did a stop sign warrant for 142nd Avenue and Barlow Road, and it did not meet the warrant uh, as, according to MUTCD, which is the federal standard for considering stop signs, and it did not meet the warrant for it. So at this moment, like for the traffic, for traffic calming purposes, we can either consider your speed display sign or speed cushions. And then anything else to add, Jarbro? I think you mentioned most of it. Yeah, stop signs are intended to assign the right of way. They're not used to slow down traffic. The reason why is when you don't have a high volume of traffic on the side street and you have a stop sign on the main street, you know, drivers may stop the first time, second time, and then they don't see anybody on the side streets. So what they, what they do, they intend to run the stop sign. So by doing this, you make the situation worse, you know, than what it is right now. So it could be a safety issue if you install unwarranted always stop control at an intersection. Okay. Um, the next question, um, this actually is probably a good segue into kind of, we did do some polling questions and we have one more, but this, these polling questions, these are not the deciding factors um, on here. So we do have a question that um, why do people who don't live on Barlow get to vote? So as according to the traffic calming program, anybody that lives on Barlow Road and 250 feet on the side street will have a chance to vote on this traffic calming project. Because like any traffic calming device, it could impact them if they're near enough, in the, even in the proximity because of visual or noise. So anybody that you can see that, also the cul de sacs because the only access is through Barlow Road, that, that's why they get a vote for the project also. So it's because of people who live on Barlow Road, visual concern, concerns, and also potential noise impact if a device is put in, put, put in place. Okay. And if you'd like to read more about the traffic coming program, you, there's a link on the city website where you can read more about the program and how we set the project area. Great. I have another statement here. We are in support of traffic calming because although there is less traffic overall, we still notice speeding. There are a lot more families with kids moving into the neighborhood. Thank you for your comment. So do anybody and, else? Yes, we have another question. What are typical concerns about speed cushions? So typical concern about speed cushions is the noise impact. Sometimes we have people feeling that as a, as a truck or something, a bigger vehicle goes by it, they, they can hear a bumping sound. And that is a, that is a concern that is valid. But we'll, we'll do our best to place speed cushion where the where they're relevant and where they're to, to minimize that issue, like where they're at the most effective for slowing down traffic and also space apart. And it also minimize the chances that someone could go through it and it could cause a visual and noise impact as, as minimally as possible if that's the option moving forward. And then anything else to add, Jabra? Yeah, typically speed cushions and speed bumps. Yeah, the issue if you have a landscape truck with a trailer, you know, with tools hanging on it, they go over it, it's gonna create some noise. But most of the time, those trucks are, will run through the street during the day. And on Barlow, I think the street ser mostly serves people who live on it. There is some cut through traffic here yeah, between Murray and Wilson, but uh, yeah, it's, it's a disadvantage of the speed cushions and speed humps. That's the only disadvantage. But don't forget, speed cushions and speed humps are a sleeping policemen. I mean, they control speed 24 seven. You don't need to do anything. You put them in, people will slow down. Yeah, you enhance the safety and livability of the neighborhood by doing this. But if you have a large truck with tools hanging on it, yeah, there is a noise involved with it. But like Tony mentioned, we tried to place them kind of at the property line where you cannot, you know, 
you won't see it if you look from the window of your house. And also, you know, it's it's less noise that because the noise will not bounce off of the front of the home. And it's the neighborhood choice. Okay, we don't have any more questions at this time. I think we can go ahead and do, oh, I'm wrong. <laughs> okay, there are two more here. And then maybe what we'll do is do the next polling question. And then if there's more questions, we can kind of come back to those. Um, or this is, yes, so one more question, two more questions here. I okay. feel as if the your speed sign is a little too far removed from Murray Boulevard where people tend to pick up speed and people's speed should be checked sooner before approaching the blind hill in the center of Barlow. Is there room to move its location further west? So if that is the option moving forward, yes, we can consider moving the location. If that's the op option after the, tonight's meeting that we choose to move forward with it, that could be considered. Okay, next question. Given that most people who will have to vote on any proposal are not attending these meetings, do you have any experience which option is most likely to be approved by our less involved neighbors? So we feel at this meeting, hopefully with, at the end we'll have a polling question to see which, which direction people are leaning towards and whether speed cushion or your speed display sign. And then after this meeting, we'll also have a virtual open house where there'll be one more chance to, for people to attend the meeting and then afterward, there'll be a support survey that will be mailed to your house. And then hopefully with the two, at least two more opportunities to speak out and provide your input, we can hear how people are feeling. And then also anybody that does not attend, we will also post the meeting on the city website. And then also we can post additional information if they want to talk to us in private or they want to reach out by email or phone, we can always talk to them at any moment about the meeting if they choose not to provide their input at this meeting. And then Jabra, anything else? Yeah, from my experience, people who don't attend, it means they don't care what's happening on the street. You know, I've been doing this for at least 20 years, uh, dealing with traffic calming and the neighborhoods. Most of the time, they don't care. And truly, you cannot guess, you know, are they for it or not? Most of the time, if they're away from the street, they will probably agree. I found out that if there are multifamily units on the street, that's where it's really difficult to have people to agree on a traffic calming plan. Because most people who live in apartments, they don't care. You know, they live there for a short time. And typically it's really hard to get, to get them to agree on the plan or disagree even. Uh, for Barlow Road, you know, if, it came from the neighborhood before the request. Before we started this process, at least 50% of the people who live on Barlow Road said, yeah, we wanna start this program and have a project on Barlow Road. Mm -hmm. So at least, you know, I'm, I'm guessing, at least 50% are in agreement, if we do a poll maybe. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's really hard to guess, you know, are, are, they, are they gonna be all for it or not? And in a minute, I will explain the process of how do we vote on the plan and, and finalize it at the end. Great. And we just have one more comment. I just want to say thanks to those who have started and participated in this process. Okay. Okay. So let's go ahead. And then if there's more questions towards the end, that's just fine. Let's go ahead and do, I think we only have two more slides, Tony. Is that about right? That's correct. So if you have any more questions that you have after the meeting, Feel free to contact us and then we have contact information both on the city traffic calming website and also at the end of the presentation if you want to provide input per in person or if you have something that comes up later on that you have something to ask us or some input and at this moment we'll go to our final polling question okay i am launching the polling question now So now please choose one of these two options, speed cushion or your speed display sign as the option moving forward to virtual open house, which will take place in a few weeks.
We'll be closing the polling in just a few more seconds here. Make sure we give everybody a, a chance. Okay, I'm going to end the polling now. And I will share the results. So it looks like a majority of the people want us to move forward with speed cushions. So that's what the city will move for at this moment. And then the virtual open house that will take place, it will take place in a few weeks and then we'll provide you more information and also we'll send you information by flyer and also post to the city traffic calming website as we confirm the date and location of that meeting. So next slide, please. So at this time, Jabra Kasha will talk about the, the, what will happen after the virtual open house that will take place in a few weeks. He will explain the petition survey along with the voting process and then along with the logistic that will take place after this meeting. Okay. Now, since the majority who attended this meeting agreed to pick option A, so this is the option we're gonna move forward with because we cannot keep flipping, you know, back and forth. We had meetings before with the neighborhood to come up with these plans. So it's not the first meeting. So we're gonna continue with option A. And like Tony mentioned, at the open house, we'll show both plans and we'll explain that the neighborhood picked option A instead of B. Depending how many people will attend the open house, if the majority of the people who attend the open house are in agreement of option A, then we'll move forward with option A. If we hear majority of the people who attend the open house against option A, then we'll come back to the drawing board to hear what their concerns are. And we could modify things. You know, sometimes people, they have a speed hump or a speed cushion in front of their home. And they say, I don't want it in front of my home. So we could tweak these things a little bit, at least to have an appealing plan that the neighborhood will agree on. So let's say we have the open house and everyone agrees on option, on option A or any option. What the city will do is we have to poll the plan. And 67% of the people who live on Barlow Road and also we go 250 feet on the side streets. If there is a short cul-de-sac that comes off the road, we include everybody within that cul-de-sac. So if, you, if you're looking at the map right now, there is a dark solid black line around it. Those are the people who will vote on the plan. So after the open house, let's say everything goes fine and we're gonna move with the plan we'll send the packet to every resident within that area that's defined on this map. In the packet, you will have a cover letter explaining the process, a copy of the plan that we're gonna move forward with. You will have a response card and a prepaid return envelope. The response card has three options. You could approve with the plan, you could check the yes, you could check no, and or you could abstain too. So the plan must receive 67% approval. And that means 67% of all the cards that they go out, we must receive back 67% with the yes. For example, let's say we send out 100 cards, for response cards we must receive 67% back of them saying yes on it. If we don't receive a card back, it's an automatic no. So if you don't care you know, about the project, you have it or not, you could abstain. And if you abstain, then your household will be taken out of the total number of cards. So it will reduce the number of cards. Uh, that's how we do the polling process. And let's say the plan receives 67%. After that, we'll schedule the plan for a hearing before the traffic commission. So this is another chance for people to come to the hearing and, you know, some people are for, maybe they'll 
testify for the plan or they could testify not. Uh, most of the time, if the plan makes the 67%, typically the traffic commission will go forward with it. I've never seen one that got, you know, 67% and did not make it through. So typically if we receive the 67% approval, goes to the traffic commission, they will approve it, and then it goes to city council for final approval and construction. Uh, if things goes well, potentially within, you know, two months, three months period, uh, it could go to the traffic commission. And hopefully if everything goes well, by next summer, we'll have a construction plan and the speed cushions or whatever plan you have uh, will, will materialize. And if you have any questions about the voting or any concerns, please, you know, uh, I believe you could still use the question and answers. Yes, we did have a couple of questions about the percentage and how many people would be needed to vote be, yeah would be needed to actually uh, vote on the plan, but I believe those questions were answered. So if anyone needs some clarification, please type it in the Q&A now or raise your hand if you'd like to speak. Okay. It's confusing. Does a ballot that doesn't get returned get counted? Yeah, that's correct. A ballot that does not get returned does not get, does not get counted. But for some reason, a household does not receive the ballot and they tell us about it, we'll send them additional ballot either by mail or in person so they do have a chance to participate. But if they choose not to return the ballot, we will we'll, we'll count as a no unless they, stay, as a, unless they choose to abstain. May I? Yeah, any, any response card that does not come back, it's an automatic no. Okay, next question or, or statement. We are concerned the speed hump will be in front of our driveway. We okay. live at 14195 Southwest Barlow Road. 14195, okay. So you talk about adjusting the location of the speed cushion. So yeah, please do provide us feedback on where you 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 want us to adjust it to, and then we can consider that. There's still option. There's still options, and there's still room for moving the speed cushions a little bit to see how where people where you get the maximum support of the option. Yeah, uh, our our intention typically we we don't install speed humps in front of driveways. Mm -hmm. We've installed them close to a driveway, and it doesn't affect you know the circulation going in and out of the driveway at all. I mean, the speed humps are three and a half inches high, so the car easily goes over it, you know, and off it without any issues. But we will take a look at the location you indicated, and if we could tweak it, move it away more, we will do that. Are there any other questions for Tony or Jabra? If you have questions for Tony or Jabra, please type it in the chat or raise your hand if you'd like to speak. And if you have any question that you prefer to ask in person, you can we have contact information at the end of the PowerPoint if you wish to contact us in person instead of going through the, the chat box, which is, which, and also we can't, this meeting will also be recorded on the city website. So if you want to go back to look at anything of the presentation or any of the meeting information, you'll be posted on the city traffic on website 
and the contact information for myself and also for any traffic coming related question can also be found on the city traffic coming website. And then do we have any more questions or any input at this time? Yes, we do have a question. How wide are the speed humps? So as you can see on the, uh, on, on the project map, uh, on the PowerPoint, if you zoom in at the area of the speed cushion on the, the PowerPoint slide, the first, uh, the first slide, so can you go back to the first slide that shows the, the overall option A? So, yep, this, this, this slides. So if you, can, if you can all open the slide on your end, what you can see is that the speed cushion will be 14 feet across, but like Jabba mentioned, it'll only be three inches high. And you'll be forced, you'll be forced cross section. So there'll be two foot gap between each of the speed cushion. And in general, like there'll be six foot, six foot in the middle, six foot sections in the middle, and then nine, nine and a half foot sections on the ends, 14 foot long, and one and then three inches high. And it's based on the street, street width of Barlow Road. Okay, are there any other questions for Tony or and or Jabra at this time? I would like to make a comment. No, if you're interested to see how the speed cushion works, uh, Sorrento Road, just not too far from where you are. You just drive to Hart Road and then make a right on Sorrento after the traffic circle. Uh, Sorrento Road has mainly speed cushions and I believe there is only one speed hump on it. So you could drive through it and see how it feels, look how they're located. I think it will give you an idea how it fits uh, on your street. I encourage you to do this. There is another question. In your experience, would this move current traffic to Barlow Court instead of Barlow Road? Uh, in, in our opinion, there will only be minimal detour of traffic. Like most people will choose, will still go through Barlow Road to, to go from Wilson Avenue towards Murray or vice versa, or to go to the household. We don't anticipate there'll be a lot of people that will transfer the other, uh, the other road because of the speed cushions. And then Jabra, any, anything else to add? Uh, uh, typically, cut through traffic are looking to reduce time. And to go to Barlow Court, you know, they have to slow down to make a right or a left to it, then drive through it, then coming out back to Barlow Road, they have to stop. So basically it's eating their time. So I don't anticipate, you know, that traffic will be shifting to Barlow Court. <clears throat> Okay, at this time, this concludes our presentation for this evening. Unless we have any more questions, um, I will be, again, this is a recorded presentation um, and this will be uh, on the Traffic Calming website as soon as we have it organized and we can um, post it. That way, if there are other people who would like to watch the presentation at another time, that would be great. At this Tony moment, Jabra. At this moment, can we go to the contact information slide, the last slide, please? So if you have any question, once again, the meeting is posted. So if you want to look back at the meeting, like Stacy mentioned, you can either find it on the City Traffic Calming website once it's posted. You can also email us or call us anytime if you have any question that you wish to provide in private or if you have something that comes up at a later moment. And then anything, anything else on your end to add, Jarko? No, I, I don't have anything to add, but we, you're welcome to call us anytime if you have any questions. And again, thank you all for participating in the meeting this evening. I know that everybody is super busy and it's the summer, people like to be outside. So um, thank you so much for attending the meeting and providing your information and your questions. And um, we appreciate you very much. So thank you. and. I will stop sharing the screen now and also stop recording.